So Rivian is now offering pretty attractive lease deals on their R1T pickup trucks. So is it really a good deal? And would you lease a Rivian over buying a Cybertruck? Yeah, so uh, Rivian now is offering some pretty attractive lease deals. So, you know, basically um, to me, if you're in the market for an electric vehicle, an electric pickup truck especially, um, Rivian is really sweetening the deal. So I wonder if this is sort of like their response to the, you know, Cybertruck unveil and the fact that, you know, um, Tesla's starting to deliver some Cybertrucks, albeit um, sort of, they're sort of trickling out. But, um, you know, I wonder if this is sort of Rivian's way of saying, oh, you were holding off for a Cybertruck? Oh, well, why not take a look at this lease deal that we have? So for me, that makes sense. I'm, I'm a lease guy. I, I, if it's a car that I'm going to have, I like to lease cars because I can get a brand new car, relatively low price, pretty decent payment. And after three years, um, I can either give it back, you can buy it out if you want. Um, but I like the fact that I can just go, here you go, here, here's your car back and um, you know, either uh, sign me up for a new one or go lease something from another brand, whatever I want to do. I don't drive a ton of miles, so for me that works. And that probably doesn't work for everybody, but for most people, I mean, I think you could probably get a 10,000 or 12,000 month or 12,000 mile uh, lease. Um, and you're not gonna go over that many miles. I mean, I, you know, maybe if you're a salesperson or something and you drive thousands and thousands of miles every month, maybe it doesn't work, but for me it does. So this is probably not a case that's gonna apply to everybody, but for me, um, the idea of leasing an R1T is pretty attractive. Now, I'm probably still about a year out from replacing the Polestar 2, and I'm a psychopath, so <laughs> I start thinking about this stuff now. Like, I'm starting to do the research and, like, what do I want to get? Um, what's it going to cost? Um, then thinking about what else is, you know, potentially going to hit the market by the end of 2024. And the other thing, too, is with Rivian being one of the manufacturers, but basically all the EB manufacturers going to NAX for the 2025 model year. I really wouldn't want to replace the Polestar this year anyway, because I, I don't want to buy a car that, or lease a car that uh, I'm going to have for the next three to four years and have to keep using an adapter all the time to charge it a Tesla supercharger. I'd rather hold off till the 2025 model year, get a car if it's not going to be a Tesla, get a car or truck that has the NAX port so it's easier to charge at the Tesla superchargers because I'm pretty sure that myself and pretty much most people out there that drive non-Tesla EVs are going to be heavy users of the supercharger network from Tesla. So with the Rivian R1T, I mean, I was looking at one. It's this one. I mean, 835 horsepower. The quad motor, the cool LA Silver, um, it's not, you know, the top spec, but I mean, it's $87,000 is how, where, where they have it listed. If you'd at least that with a $10,000 down payment and the uh, $7,500 lease tax loophole credit, um, it's $662 a month as opposed to buying it on a 72 month loan, it'd be like 14 something, 1400 something a month. Um, so basically less than half the cost of purchasing it with the same down payment. And granted, if you bought it, you'd probably put more down, but you know, you can put $10,000 down in an $87,000 vehicle and you have a $662 monthly payment. And again, this is probably not a practical case for everybody. There's probably plenty of people out there going to go $662 a month. What are you crazy? But there's plenty of people that buy F-150s, that buy Rams, that buy Silverados, you know, and they're paying almost the same amount of money for an ICE vehicle. And what are they paying per month? You know, according to NerdWallet, the average car payment in 2023 was like 700 and well, let's see, I have it up here. It was $726 a month was the average car payment in America in 2023. Well, if you're gonna pay that much per month, you should be driving something pretty sweet, right? So if, if I'm gonna lease 
a, an electric pickup truck, I'm going to want a nice one. And, you know, it really kind of tilts me more to Rivian than it is, than I, than I was towards Cybertruck. Like, I have to buy the Cybertruck right now. And I'm sure eventually they'll be, they'll be available for lease. But if I was to pull the trigger today, I can't lease a Cybertruck. And even if I want to buy one, when am I going to get it? I've had a reservation in since 2019 and I've heard nothing. I haven't gotten the invitation or whatever. I'm, you know, hey, your, your Cybertruck's ready. I don't know when that's going to happen. It's probably a year or more away. And with the Rivian, I can get it in a couple of weeks. So it makes it really difficult to stick with the Cybertruck unless it was like, I just want the Cybertruck. And then if you watched, if you're watching this, you probably watched Kyle Connor's multiple long videos on the Cybertruck, which were awesome, by the way. But um, there was one of those videos, they were driving the Cybertruck like on back roads or something in, in Texas, and they met up with uh, somebody else who had a, had a Rivian, very similar to the one that Kyle has. And, you know, they got into the Rivian to just drive it as a comparison after getting out of the Cybertruck. And I think Kyle's words were like, um, because the Rivian's so nice on the inside, I think he kind of said it kind of sucks that it's this good, right? Because the Rivian is a, a premium vehicle. I mean, the interior, the layout, the tech, it's very premium, right? Um, not that the Cybertruck is not, but I think the Cybertruck obviously is more like a Model 3 or a Model Y where it's good, but it's not like you wouldn't consider it premium, or you wouldn't consider it luxury. Um, it's better probably than most cars, but it is minimalist, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking right now, I mean, I don't really know what I'm going to do because, again, I'm a crazy person and I start planning out my next, you know, uh, vehicle acquisition way, way, way in advance of what I'm actually going to do it because I do a lot of research, I gather a lot of data, and I'm just at the start of that now. And looking at the Rivian lease deal, it... It's pretty compelling. I mean, if I love the Rivian, I love the way they look. I wasn't so sure about them before they came out, but I've seen them in person a couple times now, and they're really slick looking. Not to mention the fact it's got the gear tunnel. Again, it's very premium on the inside. It's got the big frunk. Um, and actually, if I was going to get one, this, this one that's on my screen now doesn't have the tonneau cover. But again, another Kyle Connor video where they were doing Rivian tests, and he had one with a tonneau and one without. And he said he went, you know, went to Home Depot and got some plywood. I mean, I'd kind of just go to Home Depot, do the same thing, get some plywood, paint it black. No one's really going to notice the difference. I mean, do you really need the fancy tonneau? I don't know. I might even just do that, you know, and why not, right? Um, but in any event, I'm curious to know what, uh, what you guys think. Would you stick with uh, the Cybertruck, the Rivian? F-150 Lightning, maybe wait for the Silverado, which is going to be even more expensive, uh, or wait for the Vaporware Ram Charger. I mean, that thing, uh, who knows when that's coming. Um, so, yeah, uh, the good thing is that within a couple of years, there's going to be a lot of really good choices out there if you're looking for an electric pickup truck. Now, for me, again, I guess the one other caveat I should throw in there is um, this particular uh R110 I'm looking at is road tires. I'm not an overlander, like off-roader. I mean, this is going to be a car really for me. I'm not buying it to make it work or to, you know, do work things with it. Um, I'm just going to drive it, you know, around town to the store, out to dinner when I go to the office, that kind of thing. It's, it's basically going to be a, a car for me. But I like the way it looks, so I'm not buying it because it's a truck. I just think it looks slick, and it's fast, and those are the kind of things that I'm into. So for me, leasing it totally makes sense because I'm not going to be doing anything that I could damage it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be off-roading or, you know, Baha'ing or anything where I'm going to mess it up. So for a lease, I have low miles. It's going to stay pristine. I mean, it's going to live in a garage every night, so the car is going to be, you know, pretty well taken care of so again leasing I can turn that thing back in and not have any worries or if I love it so much I'll just buy it out but um yeah so that's that's where I'm that's where I'm at right now and of course you know um I have a Polestar 2 now which I love and I'm 
pretty excited about the Polestar 4. I'm waiting to see what they're going to do with that or when that's going to come out. Um, probably towards the end of this year in the U.S. Um, but I'll definitely be taking a look at the Polestar 4 because I like sports sedans. And obviously, that's what I have right now. Um, and, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Polestar 3. I know a lot of people love it. Um, but it's a crossover SUV kind of to me, and that's just not my thing. So I know I'm probably the outlier because most people in America love crossover SUVs, right? That's the big thing here, but eh, I could take them or leave them. If I'm going to get something bigger than a sporty sedan, it would be something like the R1T or the Cybertruck. Um, just because I think they're cool, they're electric, and they're fun. So yeah, again, wondering what you guys think what you are thinking of doing. If anybody out there has executed a lease on an R1T, love to hear from you. And until then, just keep in mind and always remember that EVs are awesome and it's okay to be awesome. Catch you in the next one. If you put $10,000 down, you can lease it for like 60, 662 a month.